of other panelists and we'll be talking about a novelty, a novelty in the Macron orders that is as early as 1st of January 2018 we'll be able to consider collective contractual termination of agreements. We have a number of panelists who will be talking about what we can do next and what companies uh, will do with these contractual terminations. Marina, we'll start with you. Uh, could you perhaps uh, explain or talk us through the main principles of collective contractual termination? And also, could you perhaps react to what the trade unions had said when they were criticizing these collective contractual terminations? They were saying that these were going against the so-called social plans, that is redundancy schemes, with job protection mechanisms. Thank you, thank you, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah, collective contractual termination is one of the main novelties within the Macron laws, uh, even though, at the end of the day, this is similar to a, a system that already existed, which was called before the plan de départ volontaire, that is, uh, voluntary uh, termination. But the new system now is no longer within the scope of collective redundancies. Uh, the procedures and the sanctions are different altogether. The system will exclude all types of redundancies and the other novelty is that this is a system which can be enforced in all companies regardless of the number of employees and, more importantly, regardless of the number of jobs that will be cut. Now, the voluntary termination plans were based on case law, case law which evolved little by little with years, but uh, this meant that there were uncertainties. Whereas this time, this is the legal framework that we've been given, well, when uh, the law is passed, finally, and uh, the law specifies all of the provisions. It really is a safe system for companies when they finally sign the collective contractual termination. Things are laid down in writing and no more surprises. As I was saying before, this is based on signatures. This is a prerequisite. That is, the first step is to have a collective bargaining agreement on the basis of uh, legitimacy and majority votes. I will not describe this again through and through. We've had that before, I think. Correct. So the uh, order stipulates that the collective uh, company agreement will have to enshrine a minimum of uh, provisions and measures. For instance, a clearly a clear commitment uh, to no redundancies, to zero redundancies in the collective agreement. Also, uh, we have to have the exact number of jobs that will be cut, plus employment uh, aspects, plus how long the agreement will be valid and uh, how uh, employees can decide to withdraw. So it, uh, what will be in the system as well is support measures, financial uh, support measures and compensation, legal compensation, not a conventional uh, measures plus support measures as well for the redeployment outside of the company of the employees who accept to uh, terminate their contracts. It will have to be uh, endorsed by the authorities and it will be similar to a PSC that is job protection plan. The DIAC will have to endorse the system and uh, this uh, validation can be challenged in front of the administrative courts and the labor courts will be able to appraise possibly 
or will have the right to say that the individual termination agreement was not valid only if there's no clear consent. If we consider that people were fooled or that they didn't give their consent. With this system, the employees who decide to leave will be able to get unemployment benefits, like any other person who's been, uh, who's been made redundant, or like any other termination of contract that's been accepted by both parties. And what is foreseen is that the compensations given would uh, get the same time scheme as the time scheme that applies on redundancy uh, compensation packages. So the system is much more flexible, less cumbersome as well, and it's one of the provisions in the orders that some people were afraid of. Some, that is some trade unions, but also some MPs said and feared that with the new system we might circumvent the so-called social plans and other intrinsic uh, constraints. Correct. Uh, well, if you look at uh, the order itself and the report sent to the President of the Republic on these orders, well, you will see that the government's intention is to anticipate and to help companies adapt to business changes and markets that change as well. This being said, with collective agreement, there's no legal obligation to mention the causes or the reasons, yet with the collective agreements you can reduce uh, the number of employees who work for you uh, if you have economic difficulties, which means that in this case well, of course, there's a number of reservations on that. That is, as long as you've signed a collective bargaining agreement with the trade union representatives, you can consider reducing the number of jobs without further constraints. That is, to have to consult the Works Council. They no longer need to be informed and consulted, but only informed during the negotiation on a number of papers that would be sent to them, that is drafts, so in terms of procedure it's going to be simplified, which is an important step forward, which is worth underscoring. The employees who would accept to terminate their contracts well, would not necessarily require support measures, either the replacement uh, contract or reskilling depending on the number of employees you have in your company. There's no obligation also to recruit a person versus another person. You will not have to define professional categories either, even though we have eligibility criteria that are such that this is possible. There's no special order. There's no obligation for in-placement of workers, which means it very much simplifies both procedures and obligations. You'll be able to hire uh, people uh, even though you've cut jobs, which is not the case at present for the French PSE, that is the Job Protection Plan. And uh, regardless of the uh, reasons why you've decided to have voluntary termination, you can even rehire people immediately uh, for these open positions. Uh, if you want to rejuvenate your uh, uh, troops, of course, in your company, as long as there's no age discrimination, of course, that'll be a safeguard, a, a protection mechanism. You are allowed to rehire people immediately. And there's another important point, and that's one of the reasons why some have, uh, have uh, said that the system is not acceptable, is that upstream there's no checking of the reasons why the jobs are being cut. The government will just have to endorse the collective contractual termination. They'll have to check that there's a commitment not to have any redundancies and that all of the measures in the agreement will be met. And the authorities will just check that the 
new CSE will be informed correctly, uh, the new Economic and Social Council. And downstream, the labor courts will not be able to check also the causes, the reasons, the triggering events, because the role of the labor courts will only be to sanction non-compliance with the law or to say that the termination agreement is not valid because there was no consent. That's the reason uh, why some uh, trade unions were against the system. Okay, so there's more leeway and the procedure is more flexible. However, more flexibility doesn't necessarily mean that employers can do what they want. Uh, that is, there's a commitment from the employer not to consider firing people, yet there are safeguard mechanisms uh, so that uh, things don't go wrong, so that we're not on a slippery slope, if I may use the image. Correct. I think there are four protection mechanisms or safeguards. The first one deals with uh, the fact that the system is quite an autonomous system, separate from collective redundancies, in as much as collective contractual termination, and this was also in the order and the future legal provisions, will have to consider no redundancies at all. That is, during the enforcement of the agreement, that is, when the employees will be able to leave when they terminate their contract collectively, then the company will have no right to consider collective redundancies, except if they say that now they're going to move towards a French PSE, Job Protection Plan, which means that then you have to retrace your steps and consult and inform the Works Council on Livre 2 or Paper 2 and Paper 1. Uh, these are the first protection mechanisms, the first safeguard. It, in the negotiated agreement, we can define the jobs uh, or target the jobs that will be cut, and if, in parallel, you want to cancel others that are not covered in the agreement, if the reason is the same, the cause is the same, then why wouldn't we move again uh, to another PSC, or Job Protection Plan, for the whole scheme prepared by the company? Uh, for the time being, there's no link in terms of the timeline between a collective contractual termination and a job protection plan, a PSC. But if after the first plan there's a PSC that is being deployed, if you still have the right to say that the agreement is not valid, that is, if you're still within the two-month limit, if you can still start talking about a new plan, I have no doubts as to what the courts will say, the administrative courts will say, they will refuse uh, the whole scheme and you'll have to start from scratch. And then if employees leave uh, within the framework of a collective contractual termination of an agreement, and if these employees eight months after leaving the company realize that all of a sudden there's a redundancy scheme with very good uh, uh, severance pays, then the employees have 12 months to uh, challenge the validity of uh, the termination of their contracts. They'll probably not go back to the labor courts and say, I was fooled, I was misled, I could have had a better um, severance pay. The second safeguard mechanism is that the uh, direct has the right to look into the content or the substance of the agreement. The scope of the control could be limited if it's a French PSC, if you have a collective agreement on the PSC. Indirect control is more restricted, yet a number of very important aspects can be controlled. There are instructions from the government that say that with a collective contractual termination, the authorities were clear in what they said. The objective is that they don't want a whole group to pay for those who are going to leave. And therefore, no checks or, or given to the employees and no early retirement that should be paid by all. So what is very important in this case is illegitimate eligibility criteria 
for instance, the objective is to check that not just the old timers will be sent away. Oh, not the old timers, sorry, the senior staff, senior staff, sorry about this. Uh, this is not PC at all. It's not older people, but it's senior staff. Okay, at least the message is clear, crystal clear. Right. In this agreement, what we must have is uh, the fact that the employer will say there will be no redundancy scheme. This is a clear commitment in writing. Well, some might say, okay, this is an agreement. It's only worth what it's worth. And it's not when it's been endorsed that we can check that it's correctly enforced, but it's when it's enforced practically that we can check if it's done properly. Yet this is a commitment from the employer not to consider any redundancies. And to me, this can be checked in a number of ways. That is, when we look or review the very scope of the agreement, that is, eligibility criteria and who's going to be allowed to leave, which posts or positions or jobs have been targeted within the framework of these eligibility criteria. In principle, all categories of employees could be targeted or some or some professional categories, others would be excluded. Now, in this case, this means that this type of system will not be valid if the whole point is to close down a factory or a given department or service. Because then, could we say that employees have a choice altogether? If it's a plant that's going to be closed down, it's a bit of a forced choice, I think. But then if we look at a given department or service in one given company, then of course the scope of the agreement could be uh, only restricted to the jobs in this given department or service. As long as, as long as other employees in other departments that will not be impacted, as long as these employees can also leave if they so wish, with a number of conditions that have to be met, of course. That is, the employees whose job might be uh, cut, who could be redeployed on another position if they accept. Okay, so a transfer of staff. Correct, correct. But if the choice given to people is either you leave or we don't really know what we're going to do with you, but at the end of the day it's going to be a redundancy, this will not be accepted. So uh, the administration will check that. There are other protection mechanisms or safeguards that exist, for instance, against um, a severance pay or a check given to an employee who's got to leave. L'état de pré are, are pre-retirement schemes by the government. In the draft uh, uh, bill, the uh, administration is given a wide power to check. They're supposed to make sure that the measures for retraining, a redeployment, which are implemented by the employer as part of the agreement, in view of the uh, uh, significant importance of uh, the projects. You can't just uh, give uh, compensation. You have to give more than that. You have to allow for uh, support measures, possibly uh, a grant a what we call a mobility um, premium or uh, uh, time on a targeted p uh, basis, targeting uh, a number of job positions, but not targeting individuals based on the principle of a treatment uh, principle. In other words, you have to give all employees the same rights so it's not the person who actually holds a, a given position who is targeted at the same possibility should be offered to all employees that have similar uh, skills that might be uh, well suited to filling that same position safeguard number three which is uh, le 
employee is free to give or not to give his consent. So they're back with a provision that was uh, a, a, um, deleted in the initial uh, draft. That's the uh, right for the employee to uh, withdraw, not to accept the new uh, system. And they've reintroduced the obligation uh, to sign a genuine uh, convention, an agreement uh, accepting the voluntary uh, um, uh, departure. So, but the employee is allowed to go back on his uh, decision. And this has to be provided for in the agreement. So this is back again in the new system, even though they've been uh, pushed and we had to sign, but then you have uh, a kind of a sunset clause, if you like, you have a, uh, given a time, additional um, time to uh, think twice about it and change your decision if required. Now the uh, final step in the negotiation of agreement and uh, April 2018, it had to be signed by all the trade unions uh, that represent 50% of the votes. So this will have to be negotiated. It will depend on the background of uh, uh, weight negotiations in the company. So it's not something that we can take and take for a, a, a granted uh, benefit. So we're not really uh, there yet. Uh, Marina clearly explained that it would be the kind of a the swing of the pendulum, as it were, much more freedom, more flexibility on the one side, uh, and uh, the uh, required safeguards on the other side. Would you say that uh, a company said that this is really great with the RCCs? It's a full freedom. I'll be able to um, dismiss people because uh, now that we have this agreement, it's far more advantageous. When the orders were uh, published, my uh, general director, uh, manager, came to see me in my office, extremely uh, motivated, said, OK, we're able to uh, restore a very positive social uh, environment. We had just um, been through a very painful experience. Uh, dismissing uh, many people, so we, we knew. I think we needed to know about the um, packages, and our uh, executive said, "Okay, because there's so much pressure on headcounts, cutting down headcounts." Uh, the uh, president, the chairman, said, "Now you'll be given total freedom. It's not that simple." The majority trade union, a few days after, say, "Uh huh, we're expecting you. We'll uh, have you because." Uh, uh, you know, it was already a topic back then, collective agreements and this kind of uh, uh, dismissal, blanket dismissal. So we gave it a, a lot of thought. Don't forget, uh, this is a, a, a part of the company's experience. It is our case. So we have, uh, it's an absolute must for us to control our headcounts. So it seems to be promising uh, uh, avenue, perhaps a, an easier approach for all the reasons you mentioned, but at the same time, we'll have to uh, think twice on many points. What's, if you don't have uh, the required number of volunteers or volunteers, uh, do you want to target specific uh, uh, technologies? Uh, uh, technology change all the time, but uh, two years ago, when we devised the category professional categories, we disregarded some of the categories. So you can't really um, go back and say, no, let's use another approach, another uh, um, approach to the targeting of populations, and uh, let's pretend that we haven't decided anything. So suppose the number of volunteers is inadequate, uh, no economic, no redundancy, but for how long? Is it meant to stay in force uh, during the um, agreement, or is it a longer-term um, decision. I think that uh, our uh, uh, commitment not to uh, make staff redundant are going to be scrutinized very carefully. Uh, we were not very good so far on the uh, provisional um, management of, uh, of uh, staff. So we haven't done that much of uh, work on, on 
gestion prévisionnelle, staff, management. So um, we're not in the best situation to decide. I think it's uh, uh, it will have to be based on the, your um, tradition in terms of uh, uh, human resource management. Even if you have volunteers, uh, it's sometimes difficult to anticipate. You, you come up with a criteria and then you say, no, we'd rather try to make this one redundant so you can uh, accommodate your criteria to suit your purpose. So if you want to sign a, an agreement, a collective uh, a, a dismissal, redundancies agreement, it will be made easier if uh, the uh, companies has the uh, culture knows how to uh, negotiate, which may not be the case in uh, companies when uh, uh, some people are uh, targeted, but there's no real long-term uh, strategy in terms of human resource management. So you use uh, uh, job suppression in order to adjust the headcount even though you're not supposed to state the reasons why you want to have such an agreement uh, signed. But of course, uh, you have to explain to your trade unions why is it that you envisage taking uh, the steps and um, organize vacancies. So this is uh, very much a function of the corporate uh, culture. And then trade unions may eventually accept to uh, uh, commit themselves to sign, but that would be against written firm commitments on the part of the group, not uh, to uh, make more than a specific number of redundancies over a given period of time, or against financial commitments on the part, uh, and uh, a very uh, uh, strong support uh, measures on the basis of the, the, the past history of the company. So you can't really go back to fun history. You know, very often when PSC, you are supposed to uh, implement the measure of the PSC. So is it uh, that we could go for the redundancy uh, uh, plan to get rid of these uh, um, commitments? Some of you, all of you, in fact, have used the word anticipation. Uh, clearly, we see that uh, uh, we scrutinize uh, this uh, uh, tool, which is now supposed to be used uh, uh, in the case of emergency situations. So when is it? What are the specific situations that uh, you see the most relevant and more frequent when you want to use this tool? Now, I don't see this uh, uh, this tool as an additional tool. It's an additional tool, but I mean, it's not supposed to get rid of the uh, other tools. I've seen this in many companies that want to uh, uh, be uh, to go through a transformation process. Getting rid of jobs or making people redundant is something. The economic situation is another one. The impact of uh, digital technologies, new technologies, uh, clearly felt on the transformation of jobs. And uh, but it's nothing compared to, with a new wave with uh, AI. Uh, we're not at the beginning of, or at the end of it, we're just at the very beginning, not halfway through. And uh, this is why companies will have uh, to redeploy, get reorganized all the time as the uh, obsolescent pace is going to get faster and faster. And companies will have to invent new uh, jobs and transform uh, 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 their skills without jeopardizing their uh, economic um, viability, their uh, business capacity. So transforming pyramids, transforming jobs. Some jobs are bound to disappear. Other jobs will um, be created. And these collective uh, um, system, once you have uh, some basis and negotiation, could be used in order to uh, go through the transformation of a company, transforming jobs, uh, creating new jobs rather than uh, getting rid of employees. Uh, we need this high degree of uh, uh, transformation jobs are going to change very fast. It's not going to be a substitute for the uh, um, PSC or even the voluntary uh, plans. You need to anticipate technology. So you need to have a sound basis for that. You have to have a core to rely on. This is seems to be 
an absolute prerequisite for things to go in the right direction, for it to be taken on board. Yeah, you can't, you know, uh, organize, decide that you want to have a, a collective uh, uh, agreement. This is a, a more uh, far-reaching um, view. Would you say that uh, this is your position because probably you uh, print a fewer uh, uh, checks and, and coupons uh, and bonuses than you used in the past? So you see that the fact that your uh, uh, jobs or your skills are being transformed are easier to foresee, to predict, compare with Marnian's company. You know that some parts of your businesses are bound to change drastically. Yeah, but this is the case in many fields. The retail industry, you know, there won't be any cashiers anymore uh, checking. Uh, same thing for the uh, printed press. It's bound to disappear sooner or later. We, we're quite aware of this. And we've known this for quite some time. Then, of course, you can uh, refuse to uh, see uh, the truth. And digital, uh, the, um, digital technologies, which is look at the taxis and uh, automatic or automated uh, cars, will eventually... Uh, destroy this uh, a, uh, VTCs, those cars that replace taxis. In Silicon Valley, you know, people who are working hard on automatic cars, the problem, they say, it's not to say whether the car is automatic. Of course, it's going to be. Really, or will we be authorized to drive? You know that it's coming very soon. So the company's responsibility is to have this capacity to anticipate, to change one's vision according, which is bound to destroy many jobs and create as many jobs. And this collective uh, agreement system is bound to uh, help us do this, uh, anticipate more. So on the changes or transformation of, of jobs, new patterns in jobs, Clearly, we see that a number of uh, groups, oh, banks, sorry, decided uh, to uh, close down some of their uh, branches, uh, and the headcount is, uh, is quite high. Would you say that the collective uh, agreement uh, might be the right thing to do in such cases? Yes, because to me, this is uh, very much along the line of the uh, uh, collective, the um, executive orders rationale, the uh, ability to anticipate the changes. So we're talking uh, evolution here, rather than closing down positions or uh, making people redundant with the yellow pages, the computers, the minitel back then, at the very beginning, the first steps of the internet back then. It was a major unavoidable uh, change that had nothing to do with the economic uh, uh, situation and the case law back then referred to the need to anticipate future economic uh, uh, difficulties. So, so that was very much the case back then. So you're talking, we are talking jobs, uh, outplacement. Uh, um, I've been working in the call centers, and I would say that call centers in France, there are very few of them left in France. So, or very few it, we could anticipate this. We knew that it would be moved to Eastern Europe countries or to the Maghreb countries, but it wouldn't remain uh, centered in France for cost reasons. Uh, a few years ago, call centers were outsourced. Had there been this uh, uh, collective agreement uh, system in place, had been in place, uh, would, uh, what would have happened then? Yeah, but this presupposes that what you are saying is approved by the partners your partners. So we're back to square one, back to the need to uh, educate social partners. But this works on both, both ways. So you have to uh, um, start a real, genuine uh, dialogue. In many companies, when it comes to uh, redundancies, uh, usually, it's a uh, you're on a collision course with the uh, uh, staff representatives. So you want uh, your union representative to be educated, not to be systematically um, uh, opposing uh, your uh, uh, offers. 
you have to take them on board and onboard them. Yeah, on the transformation of jobs, you refer to the digital revolution. Typically, this should be uh, accepted now in terms of a headcount number of jobs that will be scrapped. We're not sure yet. But I suppose that this is a uh, become we, there, there seems to be consensus on this. Yeah, we have to uh, uh, step in early, especially if the economic situation is a positive one, and you can do things and do them well. When you're on the verge of bankruptcy, then of course it's a different situation altogether. But I said earlier, you needed to separate a, a transformation from the uh, um, economic. Uh, uh, situation you can highly profitable companies that need to transform at the faster pace so that's why you need to anticipate you know you can do it you have the uh, required resources I do believe in the intelligence of a social dialogue if you uh, take uh, people uh, for what they are that's responsible adults it's no reason why it should fail so um, back to our th theme, attractiveness, uh, a, a, a more, more um, attractive uh, 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 country, yeah, but provided we are able to anticipate. So we have time for uh, one or two questions before we move on to the rest. I suppose that there's no question in the audience. Yes, yeah, see a hand at the back of you. In the back. Uh, good morning. Thank you. My question is, a, a group wants to negotiate a collective uh, a, agreement, termination agreement. Now, who is uh, supposed to be the leader of the group? Uh, what about his role? Difficult at group level. Someone is bound to stand up and become the leader of the uh, uh, termination uh, initiative. How does it work? Is it not better to stay with individual terminations rather than uh, use the collective termination agreement that might be problems there. What do you mean? I I'm not sure that that got your message. Well, in fact, many people are, are, uh, will negotiate a termination agreement. Now, suppose someone, a group wants to uh, terminate a... Um, so, what about legal issues? Perhaps someone will say, okay, I was under influence. How is it going to work concretely? How does it work? The principle is that you negotiate with a union representative a collective agreement of a termination, collective um, termination that provides for all the requirements, conditions, the targeted population, the targeted group, the uh, jobs you want to, to uh, scrap, who is able to apply for the termination, what about the eligibility criteria, how will you select the candidates, how will you support them? Then suppose the requirements are, are met, so you apply, it will be accepted, I don't see why it would be rejected and there's no room for negotiation anymore. Uh, all you need to do is uh, make it a formal, uh, individual, uh, uh, formal uh, acceptance. I think what you mean is that beyond collective uh, termination agreements, how much uh, trust do you put in your trade unions? To what extent do you think that they actually represent employees? They negotiate, they represent them. Same thing uh, for this kind of collective termination agreement. So you have a number of individuals who uh, collectively represent other people. So in other words, there's going to be one filter and no more one-to-one -one uh, negotiations. In other words, you're going to delegate the negotiation of this uh, uh, termination agreement. So we need some uh, uh, feedback. Well, same principles now with the voluntary uh, retirement plans uh, um, as part of the PSC. All the requirement uh, or are uh, everything is uh, provided for and distributed. Either the conditions are met. In which case, okay, the um, staff member leaves at uh, the pre uh, previously accepted conditions. It's uh, it's exactly the same principle. 
I invite you to the next uh, workshop to um, understand the inner workings of this new system. Thank you very much.